episode. Sorry for the long delay, but it took me a while to figure out exactly where I wanted to go next, and uh, I figured it out. We're going to do our custom crafting table, and then I have some onesie twosie stuff that I'm going to do, um, specifically like some some nether ore generation, and I, I really need to go back and kind of clean up a couple of videos, stuff that I have learned, stuff that's been pointed out, so I'm going to do some, some Mo videos, some clarifications, some more advanced stuff on some of the stuff we've already covered. But this one is going to be our crafting table. Now, because we've done the furnace, this is going to feel um, pretty familiar to what we've done in the past in terms of we're going to have a container and we're going to be creating slots and all that. The biggest thing that we're not going to have is a tile entity, so we're going to save a lot of time there. So let's get started with declaring our stuff. We're going to have a public static block, and we're going to name this block work surface. Now this is just what I've decided to name my crafting table, and this crafting table is going to be a 5x5. Five five. Um, if you want to do a 3x3 three three and just have your own recipes come out of it, yeah, pubic. Nah, I'm poor. Um, I don't need that. What am I doing? Um, so if you want to have, you know, your own 3x3 three three that is specific to um, only yours, <coughs> you can do that. Mine is going to be a 5x5 five five and it's going to have its own custom crafting manager, but you could really adapt this to be a 4x2. I've seen it done in a 1x3. In a you could even do two by two, the little mini one like you have um, that you pack around with you. Why you would want to make a two by two crafting table, I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, <clears throat> um, because we're going to have a GUI, we need to actually create a GUI ID for this. <clears throat> now I'm having a hell of a time typing today. So, GUI ID is going to be one, like so and then we're just really going to do our, our regular stuff that we have done and that is our our block declarations. I'm actually going to put this under machines. Not really a machine but it's not really a block so um, block work surface and this is just the same old stuff that we've seen before. I'm going to name my class work surface and um, we're going to set the block name as is my want to work surface like so and um, yeah we're gonna leave it at that let's just go ahead uh, while we're here and actually get it registered might as well get that out of the way game registry dot register block that bad boy and work surface. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the lang file right now because otherwise I will never do it. All my stuff is just tile.blank.name. Shame on me. <clears throat> um, so it actually didn't open over here and that's because I've associated lang file with sublime text. So I'll pull this over here. Um, and we will do keep things together for the most part work surface I don't know what it is like if it's just how my fingers bend or whatever but like I always put a capital O after W always work surface file save and we'll go ahead and close that so that's done that's done so well we have an error and we are gonna have a couple of errors as we go through and do this. It's not going to be till we get pro till probably the second or last episode um, that it's fixed. It looks like did I? Where does it want to import this from? There's nothing to import. Weird. I did come through and create these. You know, I practiced this out before I do it, so maybe it's trying to remember that. I'm going to move that down to blocks because I didn't do that to begin with. <clears throat> All right, so our block class is actually going to be really, um, really straightforward in this. We're actually only going to have just a few methods. Um, and a couple of those are really just going to be the, uh, the textures and stuff. So we're going to 
import blocks. Make sure you don't do Jorbus, of course. We're going to put our constructor in. <coughs> and we don't need this stuff, this crap for crap. We're going to say it's material.wood. Easy. Get rid of that. Uh, this dot set hardness will be a 3.5 float, like we usually do for a machine. Um, set resistance is going to be a 5 float, so it doesn't blow up so easily. And this dot set creative tab is going to be NeoCraft dot NeoCraft tab. Boom. <clears throat> Some stuff that we need to do up here. We are going to um, be rendering these textures on the client side, of course. We kind of talked about that in the past. That the server doesn't do any rendering. Whoop. Um, the server doesn't do any rendering. Stuff like that. Doesn't do any GUIs. We'll get there eventually. Icon. And um, we're going to call this work surface top. Then we're going to have another one, and we're going to say private I icon work surface. Now you can do a front and a side on this if you want to. I'm just going to do a side. Um, so that way I only have to make two textures. Control Shift O, do some imports. Spell icon, right? And import that. <clears throat> and then we're going to have one more, two more. We're going to start our method. And this is a lot like we did with our furnace. So public i icon get icon. And we're going to have this be int um, side and int metadata and we are going to return um, side equals one which is going to be the top is going to be equal to so if side equals one we are going to be doing this dot workbench surface top <coughs> um, otherwise um, this dot work surface side. That should do it. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something, but that should do it. Positive I'm missing something. But that should do it. We'll come back and fix it if it doesn't work. I icon, and this is going to be our register block icon. So this is more or less where we are telling Eclipse what is in each of these variables right here. Right? It already knows that they're icons, but we're going to point out where those pictures are. And we are going to do i icon register, and we're just going to call this icon register, like we do always. Always. And this dot. Did I do that again? I did. I did. We don't actually need the side. This dot, because it's one of them is already built in block icon. So this dot block icon is going to equal icon register dot register icon, and we're going to do our mod ID um, plus plus, and we are going to say that this is the work surface side texture. And I'm going to come back later and do these textures and I'm going to ask you to do the same. Do your textures on your own time. This dot <coughs> work surface top is going to equal icon register dot register icon and mod ID once again plus work surface And I have my mod ID in there twice. 
probably could put a space there. So that's pretty much it. Why does it not like this? Because I didn't make it a void. That's why. If it's void, you don't have to return anything. What? I'm crazy. I'm looking at different methods here. This is the way that it's supposed to be. <coughs> Public boolean on block activated. And we'll recognize this one from our uh, from our furnace tutorial. Int x, int y, int z, entity player who's opening it. So we have the world that they're in, the coordinates that it's at, the player who's opening it. And um, what else are we going to have? We have a bunch of other stuff in here, but you know, to be honest with you, I don't know what it is. We have an int um, q, because I'm just making this up as I go, float a, float b, Float C. Do our quick imports there. What isn't it like? It needs a return statement. Of course it does. So we are going to say if the player is not sneaky and um, you'll notice that we use this guy right here to invert our query our, our question that we're asking. So if the player is not sneaking, we are going to say player dot open GUI and this is going to be our instance so neocraft dot instance. This is going to be our mod ID which will be neocraft dot work surface and it's going to be world x y and z so if we meet that criteria we are going to return true which means it is going to open up that GUI if not we are just going to return false like so so um, what does this mean well if you hold down your shift key you can right click on it and it's not going to open it Right. The reason that that's advantageous is you can place a block on top of it without, you know, you try to right click to place a box and you end up opening up the GUI. You hold shift and you can place a box on top of it. Make sense? Awesome. Awesome. That is our block class and our main modding class set up. And I'm going to actually call it there. And then I'm going to come back and put out our next episode. Why doesn't it like this? Ah. 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 Um, let's change this from protected to public. There we go. And we can actually jump in right now. We can see the block. We can't activate it because we haven't tied the GUI to anything in our GUI handler, right? So it opens with a GUI ID of, what is this? Missing textures. Yeah, we know there's missing textures. Um, It'll try to go to the GUI handler and then open the GUI with an ID of 1, but it's not going to be there, right? So there you go. Change up the texture a little bit because I'm working on an issue. I promise I'm working on an issue to where this always faces north. Um, it has to do with something with sides and metadata. Um, finding out the metadata. And I am going to get that figured out. I don't recall your name who's having that trouble, but I am going to get that figured out and I'm going to get a solution posted. <clears throat> so anyways, that's uh, video one of our custom crafting table. Doesn't look very pretty yet, but we'll get her worked out. So until the next episode, this is Neil. Like, comment, subscribe, and ask questions, of course. Um, you can ask questions in the comments, but I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be straight with you. It's a lot easier for me if you go to the forums, neilgaming.com slash forums, and ask questions there because we can insert code snippets and it makes things a lot cleaner and easier to respond to than back and forth over YouTube comments. And as always, you can email me, uh, neogaming at gmail.com. If any inquiries, 
help, anything like that. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.